Hi there, everybody. It's Richard McMahon here from HowToBecome.com. I hope you're doing well. Um, I had a little bit of spare time available today, so I've put together this uh, great training video based on numerical reasoning tests, and it's actually focused on um, data interpretation tests, those kind of questions that you get asked um, in a test or exam where you see a chart, a pie chart, or a graph, and you are asked to use basic numer numerical reasoning calculations to come up with the answer. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through some sample responses and then get you guys to have a go at some questions yourself. Um, a bit of fun under time conditions. So watch the tutorial and then try the answers yourself and you can put your answer in the comments section below the video. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you would uh, give the video a thumbs up. Um, and Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because then you'll be notified as soon as I've created a new video. You'll basically get an email that says... Um, Richard's created a video and you can go and watch it first so you're you're the first to watch it and benefit from the information okay let's take a look at a sample question okay now upon the first um, presentation this looks quite complex but it, it's not and this is the trick with this kind of data interpretation stroke numerical reasoning test question is to break down the information and look at the look only look at the section that you need to know about so in question one here it says um, if at least 50% in their examination is needed to go on to higher education, how many students in maths go on to higher education? So the chart here at the top, it says based on 100 students, this is the marks in English, maths and science examination. So you've got English, maths, science on the left. Um, you've got marks out of 40 above and they've got 30 and above, 20 above, 10 and above, 0 and above. This is the marks that people get out of 40. So just to recap on the question, if at least 50% in their examination is needed to go on to higher education, how many students in maths actually go on to higher education? So all we need to do is to focus on maths. We focus on that section. You can see there it says marks out of 40. But if we go back there, it says 20% and above. So if at least 50% is needed, we have to work out what is 50% of 40, and that is 20%. Therefore, we work on the 20% above section there, and the answer is, of course, 36. OK, so just to recap that, we're focusing there on the math section only. If it says if at least 50% in their examination is needed, well, marks out of 40, 50% is 20. So we need to focus on 20 or above, and therefore the answer is 36. OK, the next question I want you guys to have a go at. It's based on the same chart. So please put your answer to the questions that follow in the comments section below the video. Now, you've only got 20 seconds per question. OK, now that's quite tough. If you find you need a bit of extra time, please do pause the video and work it out because I want you to get the answer correct. So it's the same chart. So based on 100 students, this is marks in English, maths and science. OK, you've got the marks out of 40, 30 and above, 20 and above, 10 and above, 0 and above. What is the percentage of students who achieved marks of 20 or above in their English exam? So what is the percentage of students who achieved marks of 20 or above in their English exam? You've got 20 seconds to answer question two. So what is the percentage of students who achieved marks of 20 or above in their English exam? So it's the top line you want. And you need to work out the percentage. So is it A? 36%, B, 41%, C, 56%, D, 52%, or E, 48%. And like I said before, upon initial presentation, it looks quite confusing, but it's really simple. Okay, next question, question number three. I want you guys to have a go again at this. It's the same chart that's presented. Question three, what is the difference between the number of students who achieved 30 or above in English and the number of students who achieved 20 and above in science? So you're going to have to look at two rows there. So you've got 20 seconds starting from now to put your answer in the comments section below for question three. So what is the difference between the number of students who achieved 30 or above in English and the number of students who achieved 20 or above in science? And is it A, 23, B, 25, C, 27, D, 31, or E, 19? So again, please put your answer to question three in the comments section below. OK, moving on to a different kind of numerical reasoning, data interpretation type question. Here we have a pie chart, and this represents the number of crimes in a one-month period for a particular area. And the first question I've got here at the bottom is, what was the average number of total crimes? 
Okay, so what I first of all have to do is I have to add up all of the crimes. So we've got 42, 24, plus 36, plus 16, plus 14, plus 18. Now if I add all of those up, I get the answer 150. Now to work out the average number of crimes, I then have to divide 150 by the different segments. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 150 divided by 6 equals 25. Therefore, the answer is A, 25. OK, once again, now it's your turn. So please put your answer to the questions that follow in the comments section below. And again, you've got just 20 seconds to answer each question. So here we have the same pie chart. And question four is what percentage of the total number, number of crimes were assault related? So what percentage of the total number of crimes were assault related? So is it A, 9%, B, 36%, C, 16%, D, 6%, and E, 13%. Don't forget, if you need to pause the video, please feel free to do so. But please put your answer to question four in a comment section below. OK, next question, same chart. And I want you guys to have a go at question five. Work out the difference between the lowest occurring type of crime and the highest occurring type of crime. So what's the difference? Is it A, 21, B, 28, C, 32, D, 16, or E, 26? So that's question five. Please put your answer to in the comments section below. That'd be great. OK, moving on. Next type of question. So here we have a chart. It says it's the employees in departments of a company. So across the left, we've got the departments. We've got a marketing department admin, sales and IT, and then we've got months across the top. There's a six month period, January, February, March, April, May, June. And this is the employees in each department based on each month. So we've got marketing in January, this 21, for sales in February, this 22. So we need to break down the chart. So the question is, what was the average number of employees for February? So really, we're just looking at this area. And to calculate the average, all you have to do is add the total number of employees for February across all departments and then divide that amount by 4. So we go 24 plus 11 plus 22 plus 13 equals 70 divided by 4 and the answer is B, 17.5. And as I said before, upon initial presentation it looks confusing but when you break down each particular section that you just need to focus on it really is quite simple. Okay, once again it's your turn. So please put your answer to the questions that follow in the comment section and you've got 20 seconds per question. So there's three in this particular part. Question number six, what was the average number of admin employees over the six month period to the nearest whole number? So what was the average number of admin employees over the six month period to the nearest whole number? And you know how to um, calculate averages now. So A11, B17, C15, D21 or E24? Please put your answer in the comment section below. So question number seven, what was the largest number of people employed at one given time, i.e. in any month or in any department? Is it A29, B31, C27, D34 or E26? What was the largest number of people employed at any one given time across any month or any department? OK, and put your answer to question seven in the comments section below. Question number eight. What was the difference between the total number of employees in marketing and the total number of employees in sales across the six month period? Is it A, 21, B, 26, C, 31, D, 28 or E, 35? So what's the difference between the total number of employees in marketing and the total number of employees in sales across that six month period? And again, please do put your answer to question eight in the comment section below the video. OK, I really enjoy creating these videos for you. Um, it always motivates me if you give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like some more of these tests, they're free of charge. Simply click the link below the video. It'll take you through to my website where you just enter your name and email address and you get free tests. OK, you get access to free online tests that work on your smartphone. They work on your iPad and your tablet, your computer, um, you know, your desktop, whatever. Um, please click the link 
And don't forget to put your answers in the comments section below. I hope you have a fantastic day and thank you very much for watching.